I want to share with you a prophecy, one of the most vivid ones again. It was written 700 years before Jesus died on the cross. It describes the life, death, and predicts the resurrection of the Messiah. And it's like an eyewitness report again of being there at the crucifixion with Jesus. Before we go to it, some of us might not be real comfortable or know details about the life and death of Jesus. He wasn't a handsome man. Uh, he was born into poverty and lived his life and there was really nothing about him that would impress us. Then he dies, but when he is arrested, when he's arrested and, and, and brought before the authorities, he didn't defend himself because this is what he came to do. He came to die. In addition, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They beat him. They hung him on a cross. They, at one point, when he was hanging on the cross, the way people die on the cross is they eventually suffocate. They can't push themselves up to get air, so their lungs fill with water. They suffocate and they die. Now, there was a, uh, we know the prediction that, that uh, none of his bones would be broken. When Jesus was on the cross, they had to get him off the cross because at sundown, a special Sabbath was going to happen during Passover. They had to get the three people off the cross. Now, Jesus had been beaten so badly before they actually hung him on the cross that he died before the two thieves. So when they came to make sure these guys would die and get them off the cross, they broke their legs. Well, they broke the legs of the two thieves, but when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. Now, to make sure that he was dead, they pierced his side with a spear to make sure that blood and water would flow out of his lungs. So they knew his lungs had filled with water and he was dead. Then they took him off the cross. Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, requested his body. They put him in his grave. They put Roman soldiers outside of the grave because the word on the street was he was going to rise from the dead. Then he did rise from the dead and there's, we'll talk about evidence for that later, at least strong evidence for it. Now, keeping all that in mind, we go back 700 years before Jesus was hung on the cross. This is a prophecy from Isaiah, and here's how it is, chapter 53. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from, men, from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed, the wounds on his back. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? He had no physical children when he was here. For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, he was killed with two thieves, and with the rich in his death, he was buried in a rich man's tomb. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, he was unrightly charged. Yet it was, with, it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. His offspring. Remember, he had no physical offspring. This is spiritual offspring and prolong his days. He will rise from the dead. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. He will rise from the dead. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Again, so many different depictions. This one from 700 years before he was uh, crucified. But the details are very clear. The Messiah would come, he would have to die, and he would rise from the dead.